coming at you live from Nashville, Tennessee. This is Stephanie Piche, and I'm flying for flavor. for the week of my husband Norm for his annual conference and since my packing process is fresh in my mind and I've now arrived and I've been able to see what I packed right and packed wrong I kind of thought it was a smart thing to plan ahead for an entire episode about packing. So I'm also going to interview some of our traveling companions from this trip just to see if we can get any other packing tips that maybe I or you didn't think of. I'm going to go through each part of the packing process and share with you what I do that works, what doesn't, and I'm going to acknowledge what I should be doing and why. It is usually the same process for me over and over again, and I've been trying to create a system that is easy to follow and easy to become a habit so that I don't have to think too hard about it eventually. But I am still a serial overpacker. I can make lists and check them off. But I'm still working on being disciplined enough not to add 10 other outfits just in case. And yes, I put just in case in air quotes. Let's start with the list. I have read on other blogs and in books about all these all-encompassing lists. You know, those checklists that you can use like on an ongoing basis, reuse every time you go away somewhere. I found that they've never worked for me because every single trip has been different so far. So here's how my list works. So if you want to follow along, you can write this down with you. I write out the day of the week and the outfits needed for that day. So let's use my trip here to Nashville as an example. So Monday, I write travel to Toronto. Monday night, late dinner, PJs. Tuesday, airport day. Tuesday night, evening attire. Wednesday, day outfit. Wednesday, evening attire, and so on and so on. If there's specific business attire requirements, which sometimes be the case depending on what I'm traveling for, I can make note of them on the same list. So now I have a list for this week as the example of three evening events that I need to dress a little bit better than casual, two evenings where casual should be fine, and about five regular day outfits and my travel to from the airport airport outfits. I try to stick to neutrals for the most part and then occasionally add some color only when I have room in the suitcase. That's just so that I have a chance to mix and match and I don't really have to worry about, you know, eight different pairs of shoes and all this extra jewelry and accessories just to have all these bright colors. I just find it's much easier with neutrals for uh, minimizing the packing. I also plan on wearing layers to and from the destination, including a scarf or shawl that I can put over my shoulders on the plane when I'm cool, or I can add another layer when I'm chilled. So now I pull together each outfit. So I mean completely, underwear, coat, or some kind of topper, jewelry, shoes. I put the jewelry in my jewelry roll bag. The underwear and stuff goes on the top of the folded outfit for now and I put the shoes to the side to be packed separately. The outfit goes on a large surface like either my bed or the bed and spare room or a sofa and then I repeat this process with every other single outfit on the list and then I sit back and I look at it and I decide can I repurpose any parts of any outfit? Can I use the same top with two other pairs of pants, or vice versa? Is there a consistent color scheme for mixing and matching? In other words, did I go crazy with my new fondness for dark red? Can I change up any of the outfits so that I don't need as many shoes? I found that weight and bulk in suitcases usually is taken up by too many pairs of shoes. Is my color scheme working better with silver tones or gold tones? And then I can adjust my jewelry accordingly. Then I look work on my toiletry bag, which I usually keep pre-stocked. This is not something that I kind of just pack as I go or pull things from my uh, bathroom. I usually have small travel size things and other uh, smaller size toiletries that I kind of keep in my bathroom bag and I keep it stocked at all the times. So now I just have to double check that I'm not missing anything make sure I have makeup colors that match, narrow down to the bare minimums. And then I can make a quick list if there's anything I need to purchase before I leave. Like if I ran out of a travel size toothpaste or um, hairspray, that kind of thing. So then there's going to be other tips and I'm going to do a recap of these that you'll be able to find in the show notes. I will actually have a little checklist of my checklist for you so you can sort of follow along if you need something to go by. And of course, the show notes can always be found at 
This week is episode 15, so it is stephaniepichet.ca slash flavor15. So now, how do we pull all of this packet together? Stay tuned. So the question's been asked as far as what packing tip I may have. I personally never bothered with this in the past, but with all of the traveling we've done, having a carry-on in addition to the checked luggage and having wherever we're going. So if it's going to a beach, have the bathing suits, sandals. If we're going to a conference, have a, you know, dress pants and maybe one or two shirts, proper shoes. Um, I mean, it's happened to us a few times. I remember the one trip we went, luggage never ever showed up for the entire week we were there. So as much as it was always too prudent in my opinion, I've actually lived it. So that's my my tip is to bring a carry-on, bring whatever you, the necessities of where you're going, and then all will begin. Okay, so that's really funny because my <laughs> tips, if, when they read the show notes or later in this episode, are basically saying um, that I am trying to get away from a carry as much as possible. All right, so it's called uh, <laughs> You Decide for Yourself, I guess. You know what that sound means? Even here in Nashville, I still get a fly in my soup. <laughs> this is the time of the episode where I get to rant a little bit about something that's driving me crazy. And when I was thinking about packing and I was opening up my stuff here in my suitcase and I saw everything that was wrinkled, I reminded myself that it's probably because I didn't pack things properly in the suitcase this time. So my little rant has to do with uh, security going through my luggage, either at the security at the airport or sometimes behind the scenes. Sometimes they're just doing impromptu inspections of random suitcases. Sometimes they're actually looking for something through customs. It happens. But it drives me bonkers that there's no discretion about personal items. I've actually seen ladies like pick up underwear and bras out of my suitcase and lift them in the air to look underneath. And this is like wide out in the open in the middle of the airport. Or I've seen them kind of cram stuff back in. However, it doesn't matter how nicely I put it. They kind of roll things back in. They also um, have a tendency sometimes they want to look inside pill bottles, Ziploc bags, or other bags that you're trying to keep closed for a reason. Sometimes they don't close them properly. You end up with leakage. Or my husband has known many times where he has his vitamins and stuff strewn all over the inside of the suitcase. That's usually our first clue that someone's gone in it. Luckily, things haven't been missing, but just sort of thrown apart. So if anyone works customs or security or anything like that and you have to go through suitcases for a living I understand that's your job but just please be aware of the fact that we may not want to show the general public everything that's in our suitcase and just have a little care with our products and our possessions thank you okay so what's your favorite packing tip take my time I hate to rush the packing okay when you say take your time like an hour afternoon evening three days three <laughs> Do you have like a special place? You just like an ongoing thing where you throw things in suitcases? I have a room. You have a, you have a packing room? Well, I have a spare room and the suitcase goes out. And I and just pack. Pack as you go? As I go, yes. Okay, final question just because you're being so forthcoming. Do I pack too much? No. Yes. Do you pack just for you or do you pack for him too? I pack for him too. Oh, wow. You are a wife of the year. Because <laughs> I refuse to do that. <laughs> Because then I will get in, in trouble if I pack the wrong thing, didn't pack the right stuff or whatever. So, well, good for you. Well, he'll forget stuff if I don't. So. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going into uh, the next part of my packing process. So this has to do whether you're doing check bags or carry-ons. So here's how I kind of take the next step of it. I know if I know that I'm going to be needing to check a bag, I always choose the largest one to try to go without a carry on because I have a large purse that's big enough to hold my iPad and um, MacBook and cell phone and all the things that I really need that I don't really have to have another carry on outside of that if I can. 
So I kind of just use that large suitcase and that's what I'll pull out first. So I will then take each of those outfits I talked about earlier and I'm going to roll up or fold depending on the fabrics without underwear, accessories or shoes, of course. And then I'm going to add them in little piles. If you want to, and you can find them in a store, try to put your outfits in one of those zippered either packing cubes or bags. I showed a picture of one of them that I found that I use uh, on the show notes. Shoes can all go in their own separate shoe bags or packing cubes as well. And I put those in the bottom of my suitcase. And when I say bottom, not just the bottom when it's sitting opened sideways, but bottom as in when the suitcase is standing on its wheels, it'll be at the bottom because sometimes those are really heavy and you don't want all that extra weight kind of crushing everything else at the top of the suitcase. So then I take all of those little outfits and I start from the last day and then I add the outfits in backwards order, meaning either front to back or bottom to top so that the first two outfits you'll need are the easiest ones to access. Underwear goes in a zippered separate compartment with my pajamas, socks, etc. And then I put every outfit in the large suitcase except for those last outfits, meaning those first two. These should either go into your spouse's or friend's suitcase or a carry-on if you are bringing one. So those last two outfits, if you are completely 100% sure that it's going to reach your destination, then don't bother with this step. But if you're concerned about your suitcase getting misdirected because you have too many connecting flights or whatever, one of the things that we've learned is to put some of my stuff in Norm's and some of Norm's stuff in mine. And it's kind of at least given us that peace of mind that we have a couple of days where we'll have some of our own clothing and for ladies that includes please pack your own underwear because not every destination country or city or town will have the right sizes that you're going to need or something that's um you would normally buy including bathing suits for god's sakes okay so if your luggage is delayed at all or lost and your spouse's suitcase isn't then you have a backup so make sure to roll up the underwear in these add extra pair of shoes and a small ziplock of any accessories or other things you're absolutely going to need for the first 24 to 36 hours so special note if it's in a carry-on though make sure that your liquids are in a medium size sturdy ziplock and in the right liquid quantities for uh the carry-on rules So basically you want to have either on your possession in your carry-on if you're taking one or in your traveling companion's suitcase, just enough clothing and necessities to get you through the first 24 to 36 hours in case your luggage is delayed or lost. Uh, bathroom stuff. Now I go into my bathroom and I'm going to put everything I need into for a shower in one bag, meaning if I'm bringing my own body wash, all that kind of stuff, that's going to go in one. Makeup and another, and then I'm going to put my hair stuff and another one. And ladies, you know what I'm talking about. You need something that's leak proof because you're going to have all these, you know, maybe coconut oil, gels, mousses, sprays, etc. Uh, I also pack any hair tools either in its special traveling bag or I have special covers. But I always pack uh, a Trollso, a travel sized hair conditioner, sometimes my own brand in one of those travel containers because most of the hotel bottles are super tiny or are so watered down they really don't do anything. So here's some other little odds and ends that I always like to throw in my suitcase or I keep in the outside zippered section of my suitcase that have been handy more often than not when I've been traveling. So these are nightlight. Depending on the size of your room, it's a lot of uh, bathroom uh, lights are so bright that you don't want to be having to turn them on in the middle of the night. So having one of those cheap night lights, even one that just glows or something that you can plug in and can sort of guide your way in the middle of the night since you're in a strange place has been very handy. Um, I also add in a corkscrew for obvious reasons. It's surprising how many places, doesn't matter. I've been to a five-star hotel in China. There was no corkscrews. Uh, insoles for shoes, um, shoes, boots, etc. I always like to have a, especially if you're doing a lot of walking, sometimes you think that your shoes are going to be fine as they are. And depending on the ground and cobblestone or whatever you're walking on, it's always good to have extra. Uh, charging cords, of course, any adapters you're going to need. If you're in business, make sure you have extra business cards, maybe a notebook. And I always like to have something for laundry storage. Uh, I usually take two, if I have a chance, like for this trip, I unpacked my suitcase into the drawers in the hotel room, but I leave my suitcase standing in a corner with the zipper open enough. So I kind of use it as a hamper throughout the week. And this way I know what's clean, what's dirty, and it's easy for me to sort through at the end of the week. 
Okay, so now that I've talked about the laundry storage, um, you can also get little zippered bags too. I also keep uh, just knotted up or rolled up little plastic grocery bags. Uh, everyone's got to stash them at home someplace. But between those and then maybe some cheap z- large Ziploc bags, they've been really handy to store any like dirty shoes, wet shoes, or even wet bathing suits if you need them. Because not every place has a bag to put the bathing suits in. And this is my other little fun tip. For those who like to do shopping, make sure to keep an extra folded lightweight bag that's tucked inside they can either use as a tote bag or you can use it as a carry-on if you decide the last minute that okay I didn't bring one on the way here but I could use one on the way back but never uh, hurts to have an extra bag so now I'm going to go into my carry-on and purse because this is the last thing that I pack so I tend to go through I like to go through all of my toiletry makeup bags everything else that I was planning to bring with me and I'm going to pick out what I'm going to absolutely need either en route to my destination or at my destination if I didn't have my luggage for a couple of days, similar to what I did with the outfits. Liquids are going to go into a medium-sized Ziploc, and then the other items are going to go in a zippered makeup bag of some sort. I bring my iPad for reading and movies, and then my laptop for actually getting some work done. I bring a mini notebook and pen for little notes, my charging cords, my wallet, earphones. Earphones are noise cancellation, of course business cards, uh, my Nexus card so I can get through security faster, and then of course my passport if I'm leaving the country. So all of that actually fits in this carry-on purse uh, that I found. I found it at Winners, and I'm going to include the link to a cool little video just to show you all the little compartments in it, and maybe you can try to find something like that for yourself. Polysporin up your nose. Oh my god. So that you don't get all those germs that are on the planes. Dead serious. Polysporin? Polysporin. It's an antibiotic cream. You stick it up your nose. Up your nose, but just like the front of your nose? No, you just stick it up both nostrils. The packing nose, you just carry polysporin with you. Yes, in your backpack. And so before you get on the plane, you go in the bathroom, you put it up there, and then you do that. And and this is actually, you can actually buy this stuff, and it's called. was at the dollar store and it was like traveler's cream or something really? like this yes and it's meant to go up your nose okay, i thought i knew everything so that you don't get a cold when you come back from traveling how many times have you traveled and you've got a cold i know okay start so using polysporin. just the regular antibiotic polysporin you just stick them up your finger up your nose in the bathroom before you get on the plane and you go and that's it honest to god okay. swear buy it and I, I and, and and I'm saying that because you can actually buy a cream that I don't know that it's called that traveler's cream but that's where I first heard it and then my sister had done the same thing in a different city yeah. and she said it's polysporin so that's what we do every oh. time we travel it's in my backpack polysporin that's my traveler's tip there you go oh my god <laughs> everyone's gonna be like polysporin just Not like their, their stock just went up like a couple of notches <laughs> okay well I'm telling you we had a friend that just came back and he went to the Galapagos just got back and he's got a cold Right now, you didn't use polysporin. I didn't even tell him to use it. No, but dead serious, you have to do that. Try it. How many times do you travel and then you end up getting a sinus infection or a cold or something with the nose? And it's because as soon as you sit down, there's someone sneezing, coughing, or whatever. The air just keeps. How many people are on a plane? I know. You're breathing their air. I know. That's amazing. Wow, that's that's (laughs) beyond a travel tip. I'm so impressed. That's like an everyday living tip. Well done. There you go. Thank you. Okay, so before I finish everything today, I was thinking that I should follow through my promise to let you know how my packing actually worked. So uh, when I look at clothing here in the hotel room, I did okay with the casual wear mixing and matching. I'm very glad that I wore some comfortable boots with insoles in them for walking because we tend to walk everywhere, especially here in Nashville because if you're going up and down Broadway where most of the bars are, you're actually walking from one thing to another, to another, to another. You're very rarely sitting. So having comfortable uh, footwear was a godsend this week. But now I'm kind of kicking myself that I brought my fancy heels and anything because I haven't really worn them. So that will have to rethink that for the next time or just make sure that I have boots or shoes that have more of a block heel. I, as you know, did not pack a carry-on. 
and I've been really good. I haven't really bought a ton of things, little souvenirs here and there, uh, especially for my um, family and then for my uh, secret dining club that I give prizes out uh, once a month. So I got a couple of things from there. Um, I would have liked to have more sweaters. I found like I had a trench coat, which was great for layering. And then I had some like um, loose, almost like a topper as opposed to an actual sweater. So it would have been nice to have something sort of in between, where as opposed to light and easy and then the trench coat. I think it would have been better having a little bit of both. Uh, some of the things, it doesn't matter how well I pack them, they were still extremely wrinkled. So I'm glad there was enough hangers here in this hotel room to give her everything a hang. And then as I went along, if I needed something, um, I would iron a couple things every day. And so it hasn't been too bad. Bathroom stuff. I always kick myself that I didn't, um, the shampoo and conditioner that was here at the hotel that they supply was actually not bad this time, but silly me actually forgot to pack the travel conditioner, but I did, um, for some reason I had a travel size shampoo in my bag, which was bizarre. I must've looked at it and thought it was conditioner. So that didn't help me, but it worked out all right. I didn't bring my straightener, which I survived without it, which was okay. Um, nightlight was handy. I uh, haven't needed the corkscrew yet, as much as we may have had wine with a dinner once in a while. Um, most of the bars and stuff, it's not really wine worthy. Um, usually there are other drinks, so the corkscrew, we haven't really had to have use it at all when we we're here, but I'm glad I have it. Um, I think the only other thing would be my Yeti Blue microphone. So I've been using, I don't mind using my voice memo app on my phone for recording when I'm out interviewing people. However, but for my own voice when I'm talking by myself in the hotel room. I miss my pop filter and the mic. I've just gotten comfortable with it now. I'm getting better at the hearing the sound of my voice, but using that microphone makes all the difference. So as much as I was worried about it taking up too much room in my suitcase, I am now going to pack with that microphone with me all the time. So I apologize if I sound breathy. I'm actually walking around my room, um, especially when we've been out in the last few times. And again, I don't have that pop filter. So uh, kicking myself for that. That's okay. Maybe I'll just have to buy a second one so that I can actually have one uh, to stay in the studio and then one to take with me on the road. I think that's my next purchase. So hopefully you got some tips out of this. All of the notes that I was more reading from this episode, just so I didn't forget anything, I'm basically going to copy and paste or make it into a PDF and attach that directly into the show notes so that you can follow along. Again, it is stephaniepichet.ca slash flavor15 and flavor spelled the Canadian way, F-L-A-V-O-U-R-1-5. Well, I hope that you learned a tip or two, or maybe just listening to all this talk about packing kind of inspired you to travel a little more often. So either way, hopefully you got something out of this. So a last few notes before we finish today. To keep up to date on upcoming episodes, video clips, photos, and many bonus recipes, make sure to sign up for the Flying for Flavor newsletter. It should show up on the side banner anywhere on stephaniepichet.ca. So when you click on it, just quickly sign up and you will get the newsletter in your inbox on the first of every month. And no, I don't email you a bunch of other things unless you want me to, of course. So we're still booking for the 2018 cruise to Bordeaux, and you can join us from wherever you are in the world. So not just Ontario, but basically anywhere. All you have to do is meet us there. So all the booking and other information can be found in the show notes. We're going to be having a few more information sessions around Northeastern Ontario to whet your appetite with some samples over the next month or two. So make sure to email me at travelqueen at stephaniepichet.ca for the dates and locations. So I'm just winding down with my last few public cooking and wine classes for 2017. The new class schedule for January and February is online now and should be ready for online registration. But don't forget that you can also book private classes for groups of eight or more just about anywhere. But of course, we'll have to discuss travel arrangements if need be, depending on where you want me to go, right? But I'm always willing. So I'm also working on a bunch of really cool new things for 2018, uh, a little bit more online based. Uh, so stay tuned. I'm going to be mentioning them as they go along on social media or in the newsletter over the next several weeks. If you haven't been following online or browsed through my website before, I also review restaurants and hotels as I travel. 
So in the next week or two, I'll be adding in the restaurants from here in Nashville, as well as the hotel that I stayed at, the Omni Hotel here in Nashville, to the website. So if you're planning your next trip down here, you have a few suggestions of where to go, what to see, that kind of thing. And was one final request, if you like what we're doing here on Flying for Flavor and want to continue having us do more interviews, more travel, more tips, and more wine-laden giggles, please rate us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or wherever you're listening to this episode. Ratings really help us in rankings and kind of show us how many are listening and where you're listening from. This also helps us to attract advertisers. So eventually... I can start hiring an assistant, etc., and we can do this more often. It is all in the numbers. That's just the game. So thanks to Kendra, Debbie, and of course, Norm for offering their own packing tips this week. Thanks to the city of Nashville, who has made me feel so welcome from the restaurants and bar suggestions that they were sent along to me on Twitter. And thanks to every local who welcomed me and made me feel at home from the moment of my arrival. I have to leave, unfortunately, Sunday morning, but I will be back for sure. Thanks to you for listening along, following on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and getting in the Nashville spirit with me. I am having such an amazing time, so I hope you are too. Chat again next week when I'm back home, and get your champagne flute ready, because it's your intro to sparkling wine just in time for the holidays here on Flying for Flavor.